Today I'm going to show you what's inside of an automatic transmission torque converter and how it works. Now the torque converter typically sits inside the transmission bell housing and connects the transmission to the engine through this flex plate. Now that flex plate rotates with the speed of the crankshaft on the engine and bolts to the torque converter so it also rotates at the same speed as the engine. Now the torque converter has three main functions, the first of which is when your car is stopped in gear at a stop light, the transmission and the wheels are completely stopped while the engine and thus the torque converter is still allowed to turn. The second function is to multiply the torque from the torque converter as it goes into the transmission in order to give you an extra boost on acceleration from a stop. And the third function is torque converter lockup which will lock the input and the output shafts together to rotate at the same speed for efficiency. So here we've got an exploded parts diagram of this rear wheel drive transmission on this G35. We have the torque converter that sits up at the front here and you can see its output which is this front piece here drives the input shaft to the first planetary gear set. Now I've got an entire video breaking down this very transmission so make sure you click that link above and check it out. Now this torque converter is constructed of two halves that are welded together around the middle and balanced with these weights. I'm next going to chop open this torque converter so we can see what's inside. And we've got a big mess so I'm just going to use my brother's old underpants to wipe this up. Now I really underestimated the amount of mess so I had to make a quick run to my brother's room to grab his old track pants and his old t-shirt to help me wipe up this mess. And after a lot of grinding, I can finally remove the front face of this torque converter so we can see what's inside. And here we've got the torque converter opened up. Now the side that connects to the transmission, on the back of it we have these fins that are fixed to it so it rotates with the engine and flings fluid around. This is called the pump side of the torque converter. Now on the other side which connects to the flywheel on the engine, we have the turbine which spins inside of the housing. Now while the outside casing and the torque converter pump are the input to the torque converter and rotate with the engine speed, the output of the torque converter is this turbine which locks into the input shaft of the transmission. Now in between the transmission pump and the turbine we have the stator which is this piece inside of here and it locks in through these gears here to the transmission pump which is locked to the transmission casing and does not rotate. Now at the top of the stator we have this thrust bearing. If I remove the stator here you can see we have these teeth here that lock into another thrust bearing. Now the stator itself has a one-way clutch which means that it's fixed in one direction but in the opposite direction it's free to spin. Now how the torque converter works is just like a fluid coupling we have this side spinning with the engine and due to centripetal forces the fluid is going to make its way through these fins here to the outside. It's then going to go into the turbine fins over here causing it to rotate due to the angle of these fins. Now that rotation is what's going to allow the turbine and thus the transmission and wheels to turn with the engine speed. Fluid is then going to make its way through the turbine here and then back down into the center to be recirculated into the pump again. However the fluid has now changed direction you can see that the fins are now pointing clockwise like this and that's why we have the stator here to change that direction with its fins in the opposite direction of the turbine and then send it back out to the transmission pump for better efficiency. The fluid is then going to complete its circuit through centripetal force by going through the transmission pump once again to be recirculated in this torque converter. So here I've got a quick cross section of the torque converter here. We have this side here which is bolted up to the engine through the flex plate and that rotates the entire thing. And on the front here we have the pump which is fixed with the housing that's also rotating flinging fluid from the center to the outside. That fluid is then going to change directions and flow back in through the turbine causing a torque on the turbine allowing it to spin as your output to the transmission. The fluid is then going to change directions once more through the stator which is fixed to the transmission casing before going back out into the pump to kind of recirculate it. Now as mentioned before the torque converter has three main functions. The first of which is when you're stopped at a light the transmission and wheels and thus this side of the torque converter on the turbine are completely stopped while the engine side is free to rotate that's because there's a fluid between here that allows that slipping action as opposed to a mechanical clutch in a manual transmission. Now the second main function is torque multiplication and that's when there's a large difference in speed between the engine rotation and the turbine rotation such as you just release your foot from the brake and step on the gas during acceleration. Now that large difference in speed is going to create a very large force on the stator which goes against its one-way clutch and it locks up therefore forcing the fluid through it and then back into the transmission pump. That force is going to create an additional torque which is called torque multiplication to help the vehicle accelerate off the line a little bit quicker. Now once the difference in speed between the input and the output starts to normalize around cruising speed the one-way clutch starts to freewheel on the stator. Now the last function is the coast function and we need to remove this turbine from the housing to see what's inside. 
And with that turbine finally cracked away from the casing, you can see we have a clutch pack inside of here. Now that clutch pack sits on the casing of the torque converter which rotates with the speed of the engine. And inside the clutch pack, the teeth engage with these teeth here on the back of the turbine. Now just like a transmission clutch, these teeth are free to spin when there's no pressure applied to them, which allows for the variation between the input and the output speeds. However, the variation between the input and the output creates an inefficiency because not all of the energy can be transferred through the fluid, and thus we have a torque converter lockup during cruising speed. Now when a torque converter is locked up, it means that the input, which is coming from the engine, is locked to the output, which is the turbine, and this clutch engages. Now this clutch is hydraulically engaged and is controlled through the transmission valve body, where it sends fluid up the input shaft here, which plugs into it, and that's gonna be responsible for pressurizing this clutch, locking the input and the outputs together. Now as I mentioned before, the torque converter locks up when the vehicle is cruising, i.e. it's in fourth or fifth gear. In this case, it's controlled by the transmission control computer which takes a bunch of parameters and decides when it's ready to lock up it'll then send a signal to the solenoid valve in the valve body which will then control a clutch and thus a piston to send line pressure to the torque converter to either lock it up or to release that pressure and that's all the components that go into the torque converter to make it work on your car make sure you follow me on instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one